Hey everyone, this is Dr. Jyoti Bala. A very warm welcome on our YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing great. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me your precious feedback on our past videos. Some of the student and researcher has also approached me as I do have experience from Japan, Hokkaido University and Osaka University to make this video and provide them some crucial information regarding how to apply for PhD position, especially in Japan and what are the perks of doing research over there along with the procedure and the strategies for the application. So let's begin this session. So the agenda of this presentation and session will include like what are the perks of doing PhD in Japan. I will also guide you and tell you a few of the fellowships and awards which you can avail for doing PhD in Japan, along with some list of best institute, universities and colleges which are doing really great in the sector of life sciences and biology. And what are the crucial requirement and documentation while applying for these applications and your preparation strategies which will enhance your chances of uh, getting these PhD fellowships and award. And I will summarize all these things in a key takeaways in the end. So let's discuss some of the perks of doing PhD in Japan. Japan is known for its technology. So if you really want to get experience in the advanced and recent development in biology, life sciences, biomedical, biotech, or big data biology, Japan is a great choice for that. With my own experience, I have noticed that Japanese people are very friendly, supportive. We really make your experience and stay easy and comfortable over there. As a student, that is very important if you are going to some different country for your graduate program or for your studies and for your research. So you are young and you really want to be safe in a different country. So Japanese universities and institute really provide you excellent opportunities, comprehensive training, world reading universities and institutes. Approximately, I think 800 universities are there, which has already provided lakhs of international PhDs. So it's a really great options to opt for. They will provide you high research and training in your education and research sectors. You will gain international experience. You will also gain the Japanese literature because the country is really very high in culture and heritage. So you will gain this international experience when you go there. They will also for to the PhD student, they will also teach the language. So you may either you are doing research in a different area, but you can learn the Japanese basic language also for your daily communications and all which will also enhance your uh, industrial employability and job uh, employability because you are gaining research experience also and one international language experience also so getting jobs will be uh, easier for you people and along with that as i said they will also provide a lot of funds fellowships and low tuition fees so opting for a PhD in Japan is really a sensible decision and a very wise decision. A lot of Nobel Prize each year Japanese researchers and scientists are getting. So you will be gaining a high research experience in Japan for sure. So let's discuss some of the best institute and universities which are in Japan where you can apply. I myself has worked in Osaka University and Hokkaido University as a postdoctoral scientist. I have also got uh, my scientific job opportunity from staff scientist uh, opportunity from Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. If you talk about the best institute, University of Tokyo, Osaka University, Kyoto Universities are always in the top uh, list of uh, top 10 universities in there. And uh, then you have uh, Hokkaido University, Kobe University, Kyo, Kyo, Waseda Universities and all. 
so if you are planning to go there for your graduations and for post doctoral job or for masters program you can opt these universities you can visit the website of these university pages and see what kind of supervisors and research experiences and research interest and research is happening in those areas most of the nobel prize winners are from these institutes and universities so try and go and visit this website and see the supervisor research experience and work area and accordingly apply and approach those uh, institute and supervisor let's discuss what are the crucial requirement and doc documentation required for applying for fellowships and positions a very important fellowship which is called as max fellowships uh, is very uh, known uh, if you are applying for phd positions in japan so those countries which has uh, uh, diplomatic relation and good relation with japanese government like uh, indian government also has those diplomatic relations so japanese government provide these fellowships to those students and the participants so either you are at student level if you are planning to apply for undergraduate masters phd level or maybe you want to go to learn language over there after your school or whether you are a teacher and then you want to go there for training purpose in all those stages they provide you scholarship so if you are planning for your phd applications there are two way by which you can apply for these position one is you can go to this uh, uh embassy site and other is you can also get the recommendation from the university and that is the reason i have asked you to visit the university and institute site and you you should talk with the supervisors who has research interest interest similar to, similar to yours so you can uh, get their recommendation from universities also so most of the students go with this recommendation in embassy site and there you have to visit this max uh, fellowship application you have to go and visit the embassy site and there you have to apply for these positions which require you to fill the application forms and you have to provide your documentations and then they will conduct a written examinations and final students will be called for interview so mostly here you have to have a very effective cv i have already mentioned in my other uh, documentations and videos when i have made for study abroad program similarly a effective cv which can state your experience your a good marks during your graduations masters which can show your interest in cover letters all these effective strategies you have to make while preparing for all these documentation they will ask you to provide your recommendation letter similar to us and statement of purpose and they will ask you to write some essays also like what is your present studies what is your research theme where you want to work and what kind of research proposals if you will visit in japan what are you going to do so in a essay form you have to fill all these uh, paper, uh, documentation in the embassy site and along with that you have to provide all your graduations masters at whatever stages you are applying for max fellowships you have to provide them these graduation degree and transcripts also so timely and uh, timely uh, make all these effort to arrange these documentations get your uh, effective cv cover letter recommendation sops done and then you visit this embassy site and provide all these information and then accordingly based on because this is very highly competitive also so based on your experience if you do have any uh, training obviously then the essays and sop will be uh, improvised so you will have the idea like uh, while writing the research proposals so accordingly they will call you for uh, these uh, interviews and written examinations 
So let's discuss how to apply and how to strategize your preparation for these fellowships and all these things. Either you are applying through universities recommendations or you are directly approaching the institute, university or faculty or either you are applying for max. You have to get the ideas on which research topics you are going to work because you have to submit research proposal to your supervisors also and for max also. So it's better depending on like you are planning to apply for PhD. Otherwise, if you are applying for undergraduate and masters or your teachers on language training also, the requirement are a bit different. But for PhD purpose, research proposal, the essays, these things are important. Uh, yeah, so prepare those documentation along with that effective CV, statement of purpose, recommendation letters if you have. So here if you have already done some training and programs it is going to help you. So those things you have to prepare and then uh, if you, uh, you have to visit this embassy site because the application purpose and the written test and interviews will be conducted by them. So your passport, your visa and this applications, you have to timely apply for all these things. The fellowship wise, they will give you a decent amount of fellowships. They will also give you educational fee, tuition fee, your travel expenses when you will visit uh, Japan and when you will come back and also provide you accommodations in the uh, hostels and the registrants halls for uh, they have specifically uh, all the universities has for international students. So overall you will be good in your budgeting and accommodations and all these things. The fellowship is really decent amount and uh, Japan will support you your uh, all these expense and tuition fees. So don't worry about those things. Just timely preparation and application is more important. Your preparation for examination, the written examination and interviews is important actually. So because these are very highly competitive uh, fellowships also. So timely apply for all these things. To summarize all the key uh, point here, you have to apply timely first thing will be that then you will require effective documentation in terms of your CV statement of purpose recommendations and as you have to pro write it out uh, uh, you have to provide them research proposals also so in advance prepare all these documentations and then arrange all your transcript degrees and documentation depending on either you are applying through embassy or you are directly applying to the institute. So arrange all these things and be ready with your passports and visa application and procedure are not very challenging here. Uh, like getting the US and UK visa takes a lot of time. But here if your documentation, if your scholarships, everything is ready, then getting a visa will not be a very uh, big thing or uh, it won't be a challenging task and uh, but the, yes they will going to check the background uh, history and all those things so be ready with all the documentations and all these things and accordingly if you get the opportunities and fellowship then plan your trip in advance also and be safe from my side good luck for all your applications and fellowships and if you are liking these videos and information, I would like to request you all to subscribe and share these uh, videos with your scientific endeavor. Thank you so much.